Hello everyone. Today I will be explaining you why there will be dyslipidemia in thyroid disorders. So before I move on to explain why there is dyslipidemia in hyperthyroidism and uh, hypothyroidism. So I would I need to explain you some of the normal functions of thyroid hormones on lipoprotein metabolism. The first one that I would like to explain here is the effect of thyroid hormones on HMG-CoA reductase enzyme gene. HMG-CoA that is hydroxymethyl glutaryl coa reductase is a rate limiting enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis. Thyroid hormones they are going to induce the gene for HMG-CoA reductase enzyme and thereby increases the quantity of HMG coa reductase thereby more cholesterol is synthesized. So it means in hyperthyroidism the gene for HMG coa reductase it will be induced whereas in hypothyroidism that induction it will be reduced. So technically speaking in hyperthyroidism there must be high cholesterol level in hypothyroidism there must be low cholesterol level but we don't see that in practicality. So in hyperthyroidism, as we all know, there will be increase, sorry, decrease cholesterol level against to whatever the point that I said before. Whereas in hypothyroidism, although HMG reductase gene is not induced because of the low levels of cholesterol, but still you see high levels of circulating cholesterol. So this is kind of contradiction here. So let me explain why you are going to see hypocholesterolemia in hyperthyroidism and hypercholesterolemia in hypothyroidism. So now T4, T3 and T4, it has got a positive effect on lipoprotein lipase enzyme. Let's talk about lipoprotein lipase enzyme here. So the normal function of lipoprotein lipase is it is going to act on triglycerides present in VLDL and convert that into IDL. And also lipoprotein lipase which is attached to the endothelium of the blood vessels which is activated by APOC2. It is going to act on chylomicrons triglycerides and convert them into chylomicron remnants. That's the normal function of T3 and T4 on lipoprotein lipase. Now the lipo, uh, T3 and T4 thyroid hormones they have got a positive effect on CETP that is cholesterol ester transfer protein. So the normal function of cholesterol ester transfer protein is as it is there in the name it is going to exchange cholesterol ester for triacyl glycerols. So the triacyl glycerols from VLDL, IDL and LDLs are exchanged. In return, cholesterol ester is given from HDL. So cholesterol ester transfer protein, what it does, it is going to take triglycerides from VLDL, IDL and LDL and in exchange, it is going to give cholesterol ester from HDL. It means VLDL, IDL, LDLs, they will give triglycerides to HDL and HDL in return it's going to give them cholesterol ester. This job is mediated by cholesterol ester transfer protein and that function is stimulated by T3 and T4 thyroid hormones. Now thyroid hormones also have got a positive effect on hepatic lipase. The function of hepatic lipase is Hepatic lipase is going to degrade triglycerides present in HDL2 molecule. And note that HDL2 molecule, they are rich in triglycerides and also they are rich in cholesterol ester. Now HDL2, as they pass through the hepatocyte membrane, especially the scavenger receptor B1 receptor, so the adjacent hepatic lipase located on the hepatocyte membrane, what it does, it is going to degrade triglycerides from HDL2 and convert that into HDL3. It means HDL3 is rich in cholesterol ester, but it has got less triacylglycerol after the action of hepatic lipase. This function is stimulated by T3-T4. Okay, so 
T3 and T4 they are going to decrease oxidation of LDL so they have got a negative effect on oxidation of LDL so LDL oxid LDL is the normally what happens if there are too many LDLs LDLs will be oxidized and oxidized LDLs they will be and uh, taken up by the macrophages and become foam cells and that's how atherogenesis is initiated it means t3 t4 they are it is going to prevent atherogenesis atherosclerosis now one another effect of t3 t4 is t3 t4 is going to increase ldl receptor levels it is going to act on the gene and increases the expression of ldl receptors on the cell membranes especially the liver and the peripheral cells so when the ldl receptors are available plenty on the cell surface so ld circulating ldls can be taken up, taken up by the liver and peripheral cells that's how ldl can be decreased it means ldl cholesterol levels can be brought down so these are some of the and it has been also been noted that t3 t4 it is going to decrease the expression of pcsk9 there is something called pcsk9 pcsk9 so the pcsk9 this is pro protein convertase subtilisin kexin 9 this is pro protein convertase subtilisin kexin 9 so t3 and t4 it is going to they are going to in, uh, decrease the expression of pcsk9 or decrease the quantity or the concentration of pcsk9 you need to know what is the function of pcsk9 here so the pcsk9 if it is there it is going to go and bind to this ldl receptor here by binding to ldl receptor it doesn't allow ldl receptor to function properly it means ldl receptors do not bind with ldl and do not internalize ldl from the circulation it means whenever there is more pcsk9 so the ldl circulating ldl is not taken in it means ldl levels will build up in the blood leading to hypercholesterolemia so it, in that sense pcsk expression is not good so what t3 t4 does t3 t4 they are going to decrease the expression of pcsk9 on one side t3 t4 they are going to increase the expression of ldl receptor on the other side PC, they are going to decrease the expression of pcsk9 thereby facilitate uptake of ldl from circulation that's the effect of t3 t4 on pcsk9 t3 t4 also they will increase bile acid synthesis that is bile acid formation from cholesterol especially in the liver so the cholesterol is diverted into bile acid formation so t t3 t4 will have an effect on 7 alpha hydroxylase enzyme the 7 alpha hydroxylase enzyme is the rate limiting enzyme in bile acid synthesis so cholesterol is diverted into bile acid thereby cholesterol levels in the liver can be taken care to certain extent although it doesn't really affect ldl con cholesterol concentration in the circulation but still cholesterol is diverted into bile acid formation in the liver which is mediated by t3 t4 all this i have explained so far is about the normal function of t3 and t4 now let's move on to see what happens in hyperthyroidism and what will happen in hypothyroidism so as you all know hypothyroidism so it means low levels of or decreased levels of t3 and t4 so when there is decreased levels of t3 and t4 so the all the positive plus signs that you are seeing here so that plus sign would be there it means effect of t3 t4 on lpl will be decreased because of this what happens l vldl will be accumulated because lpl activity decreases so there will be increase in the vldl and also there will be increase in chylomicrons not shown here in this picture so chylomicron levels will also be increased because of this as you know vldl and chylomicrons both of them they are rich in triacylglycerol it means 
triglycerides in the blood increases leading to hypertriacylglycerolemia so and also uh, t3 t4 its positive effect on cetp is now not there so cetp function decreases cholesterol ester transfer protein function decreases because of this what happens exchange of triacylglycerol from vldl idl ldl to hdl in return hdl will give cholesterol ester so that is not there here it means vldl sidls and ldls they will be having more triacylglycerol and having less cholesterol ester because of this abnormal type of lipoproteins will be made it means vldls will have more triglycerides ldls will have more triglycerides comparatively than cholesterol ester so it means lipoprotein x and beta vldls can be seen here in hypothyroidism now if the lpl is uh, sorry hepatic lipase function is decreased here in t3 t4 because of this hdl2 conversion of hdl2 into hdl3 this process will be decreased it means there will be accumulation of hdl2 in the circulation note that hdl2 is it is rich in triglycerides and cholesterol ester so it means it contributes to hypertriacylglycerolemia and also it contributes to hypercholesterolemia now decreased levels of t3 and t4 so that will decrease the expression of ldl receptors here so because of this ldl receptor availability over the hepatocyte membrane decreases because of this so circulating ldls are not taken up by the peripheral circulation it means the ldl levels will be elevated so leading to hypercholesterolemia and also t3 t4 normally they they repress pcsk9 expression they decreases pcsk9 expression now the t3 t4 in hypothyroidism is down it means pcsk is expressed when the pcsk is expressed as i already explained pcsk is going to bind to ldl receptor and it doesn't allow it to be internalized so this will lead to decreased uptake of ldl from circulation so it means ldl will be remaining elevated in the circulation now because of all these effects so ldl levels will be elevated in the circulation leading to hypercholesterolemia now this increased ldls one another function of t3 t4 is ldl uh, t3 t4 it decreases oxidation of ldl Oxid ldl oxidation is prevented by normal t3 t4 now on one side we have seen ldl levels are increased on the other side oxidation is prevented it means in hypothyroidism there will be increased oxidation of ldls now as you know oxidized ldls they will pass through the endothelial membrane get into the intima of the blood vessel and macrophages follow them and macrophages going to engulf oxidized ldls through this through their scavenger receptors and because of this they will form foam cells foam cells will in initiate all in means release inflammatory mediators and that's how the atherogenesis starts atherosclerosis occurs and this is the region why hypothyroid patients they are at risk of cardiovascular events so overall because of the effect of t3 uh, t3 t4 on all these enzymes are now decreased so overall these patients will have increased cholesterol levels and increased triacylglycerol levels so that's the explanation why in hypothyroidism t3 t4 uh, t uh, sorry the cholesterol levels are elevated and why triacylglycerol levels are elevated now let's move on to see what happens in hyperthyroidism so in hyperthyroidism as you all know so there is increase in the t3 t4 levels so when there is increase in t3 t4 levels so basically all these functions are enhanced although t3 t4 they it is going to induce hmg coa reductase enzyme levels leading to increase in cholesterol but that will be taken care by elevated activity of all these enzymes here so lpl activity increases in hypercholesterol uh, sorry hyperthyroidism because of this what happens there will be rapid clearance of vldl into idl 
and idl will be acted on by hepatic lipase enzyme on the liver surface so hepatic lipase activity increases it means idls are cleared from the circulation triacylglycerols are taken up by hepatic lipase release that means get that into um, uh, hepatocyte hdls are rapidly cleared from the circulation by hepatic lipase increased activity of hepatic lipase under the influence of high levels of t34 increased activity of cetp is there under the influence of t34 so it means cetp is that exchange function vldl idl ldls giving triacylglycerols hdl giving cholesterol ester all that is increased so overall it is bringing down cholesterol levels and also ldl receptor uh, expression is increased here in the presence of more t34 it means cells will have more ldl receptors on the surface so ldls can be rapidly taken inside clearing clearing them from the surface and also note that increase in uh, t34 so they are going to inhibit pcsk9 expression pcsk9 expression is inhibition inhibitory effect of t34 on pcsk9 is enhanced here it means pcsk9 is no longer binding to ldl receptor it means ldls are taken up into the circulation so and also increased levels of t34 they are going to enhance prevention of oxidation of ldl ldl oxidation is totally prevented here it means ldls on one side they are taken in into the hepatocyte and peripheral cells on the other side oxidation of ldl is prevented it means it is preventing atherogenesis so in terms of lipid metabolism so having hyperthyroidism is helpful but as you all know hyperthyroidism will have so many other clinical signs and symptoms so it doesn't really help a patient but otherwise in relation to lipoprotein metabolism hyperthyroidism is going to keep low cholesterol levels low triglyceride levels and it is actually preventing atherosclerosis in hyperthyroid patients so this is all about the effects of t3 and t4 on lipoprotein metabolism and what are the changes that you are going to see in hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism i hope this video is, uh, was helpful to you so i'll come up with some other video some other time till then take care